Hi, I'm Leslie Beggart, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of the Fabulingua app. This is the Fabulingua Island. If you tap on the screen, you will bring up the UI. You will see the number of gold keys you have, the number of diamond keys, and this is your profile. If you tap that, and that's your level, you can switch Explorer to other children if you have them there. I, this setup doesn't have them right now. Um, and you will see that there is the tutorial beach where you would go and get your tutorial. And then there's a series of locations that um, these two are locked. Normally when you come in, they're all locked and they unlock as you complete a certain number of levels in each location. So when you fill the you finish the tutorial, it would unlock uh, location one, which is this one here where this character is currently located. So let's go to location one and um, see what Fabulingua is about. So here we are in the pond. The pond is interactive. You can make it a nighttime scene. And there are characters in each location. And the idea is you tap the character, you hear their story, and in the process of hearing their story and mastering their story, you're going to be naturally acquiring the language through comprehensible input. So here is the learning path for each story. Along the top, in the larger buttons, you will see the story modes, different ways of hearing the story. You have to progress in sequence through them. Um, the first mode is the magical translations. I'll talk about that. Then they've got copycat, Espanol, Spanish only, and then read by myself. And along the bottom, the smaller um, circles are the mini games, vocabulary matching game, and the mini games, they kind of work either they, they test certain amounts of comprehension or they work particular concepts. This one here is a scrambled syllables game. It's going to make you very aware of syllables in Spanish, were very, very, very important. Scrambled letters and then el la, like a matching game for, for genders and pronouns. So here is magical translation, which is how Fabulingua creates comp that all important comprehensible input that is so important in language acquisition. So let's get a feel for it. Mi papá, my dad, es alto, is tall. Mi mamá, my mom, es baja, is short. Ayúdame a darle una flor. Help me give her a flower. Once the narrator is done speaking, it all becomes interactable, and you can start tapping around in it. Te quiero. I love you. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. So there are going to be little things throughout it that you're going to learn how to count and do various other things. But basically, as you've seen, we have these magical translations in each page. And the purpose of the magical translations, they are not permanent translations. There is no written form of translation. It is a spoken translation, by definition temporary, so it is not a permanent crutch that would maybe stop you from learning the language. Because it is a temporary spoken translation, it just gives you that instant understanding of what that page is about. Now, the expectation isn't that you're going to remember from one pass what the word baja means, but you do have a general understanding of the gist of this page. You understand this is about the dad being tall and the mom being short. And really that is all you need for this to be comprehensible input and therefore start work, learn it, working to get you in that language acquisition process. Now, if you in particular want to know, and this is something adults would do more than children, if you really want to know what the word baja is, you would go and touch it. There is a syllabic breakdown of each word and a translation of each word in every single part of the story. So let's hear that. Baja, baja, short. Alto, alto, tall. And then you can interact with it in la flor the flower in other ways anyway that's the magical translations each story has got you can see the story and you collect keys so in magical translations you would collect two keys in this uh, developer mode i can go through the pa pages really Me. fast which you cannot Me. do you can see you've collected that Me. key i'm just going to whiz through it till the end Me. and we're going Me. to collect the Fine. two keys yeah. that we will My. have Earned from doing May the magical Alma translations of this story. Me. Felicitaciones! Congratulations! Terminaste el cuento. You finished the story. Ahora puedes recoger tus llaves. Now you can pick up your keys. 
So you would tap the keys, they would go up into your wallet, fill up your wallet with two extra keys, and now, boom, you would come to the next part of the magical translation, which is that matching game. Um, I'm gonna leave the games till later. I wanna really just showcase right now the um, modes. Uh, let's listen to this second mode, which is copycat in this other story. Okay, we're gonna continue. Yo escojo. So then the Rick, I'm going to, this is copycat. The aim here is for the child to mimic, really mimic what the narrator is doing. So I'm gonna put on a little child voice right now and I'm gonna to pretend to be copying this narrator. I would hold and tap, uh, hold the record button. Yo escojo un círculo. Un círculo. Pinto un círculo rojo. Pinto un círculo rojo. Yo escojo. Yo escojo un círculo. Un círculo. Pinto un círculo rojo. Pinto un círculo rojo. Okay, that um, the the important thing here is that the child is hearing each part of the phrase side by side with the narrator, and they can really hear when they don't sound like the narrator. And even if they, I mean, they can go back and re-record if they want to, and they can replay it back. But typically children don't do this. They will just press the check mark and move on to the next page. But they are left with a desire to sound more like the narrator. So what happens is in the next page, they will actually listen more carefully and tune in more with when they pronounce it. Now, again, once this is done and then the, the, the job is done on that page, this page becomes interactive. El círculo, the circle. And you can do whatever activity is the correct activity in, círculo. in that page. El suéter, anyway, so the that sweater. is copycat. And now let's go to Spanish only. Spanish only is kind of pretty. See, here we go. We've unlocked magical translations. We haven't done the little vocabulary matching game, but that's pretty obvious. We've unlocked copycat, which we just did. Then there's a scrambled syllable game. And now we're at Spanish only, a little quick demo there. And the idea here is now you really do understand the story you've gone. Maybe you've done magical translations a few times. You've done copycat a few times. Each time you can go in and tap words if you don't know what they mean. And now you're just gonna enjoy listening to the story um, on its own. Dos amigos traviesos se ríen en clase. So, narrator's done. Un amigo. <laughs> Dos amigos. Everything is interactive. La pirámide. El cilindro. El cubo. El amigo. <laughs> Anyway, so that's Spanish only, pretty uh, clear. Um, uh, and now let's go to the final one, which is read by myself. Oh, and what I have not mentioned, let's go into a different location to do read by myself, just to get a little, a different visual. This is Fairy Falls. Um, so here we are in a different location. This is where the fairies live. There's Grandpa's farm and... Uh, see here, all of the learning path has been uh, completed. Now, this uh, read by myself, as you can see, is a bonus mode because obviously very young children probably will not get here because they're not readers. Although you'd be surprised. Some of them memorize the stories and can quote unquote read the story to you. Um, but um, <clears throat> here you no longer have the narrator reading it for you and you copying them. You've already done that work and you've done it as many times as you wanted to and it didn't store that for you. This is going to actually store the recordings for you on the device. So I've already done this story many times. I know it well. Raquel se pone un vestido rojo y unos zapatos rojos. And then it would play back. Un vestido rojo y unos zapatos rojos. 
Okay, so if I'm happy with that now here, I am, children may do it again if the dog came in and barked or if they didn't like how they do it, they can do it again because we're gonna keep one recording from each page and then they're gonna be stitched together at the end. But you're gonna press yes. And then as per usual, once the work is done, the page becomes interactive and you can play with it. El vestido, the dress. Los zapatos, the shoes. El collar, the necklace. Qué ilusión, how exciting. Estoy vestida, I am dressed completamente, completely, de rojo in red. Now, um, when you touch things a second time, um, el hada, the fairy, etc. Well, anyway, el cuadro, the painting. Completamente, completamente, completely. We try to use cognates where we can in order to facilitate that comprehensible input. Um, just to let you know, in the settings, um, you know when you were going through magical translations, uh, you can just, uh, if you have native Spanish speakers that don't need the translations, you can just uh, turn, um, you know, adjust the settings so that you can drop the translations if those are not suitable for your learners. You can always redo a page, etc. And you can know exactly where you are. Here, one of the things that I forgot to mention is that as you progress through the modes from magical translations to copycat Spanish only read by myself, you earn more and more keys. So here, because we are in read by myself, which is the most challenging mode, you're gonna earn one, two, three, four, five keys for this story. So the idea is to incentivize you along that learning path for each story. Um, now I'm probably gonna go back and um, show you the, uh, no, actually let's go back to one of the earlier, um, earlier stories to show you the, um, to the, the pond. I wanna show you the um, games. Uh, actually, I'm gonna show you the game. Sorry about this. Um, one of these other games here. The vocabulary matching game here. Pretty straightforward. So, um, kids who can read it would just, you know, put things in the right place. Um, but if they cannot read, El murciélago. Okay, so now they know the Spanish, but maybe they're not sure, you know, these are not exactly scientifically representative. They are cartoons. So if they're not sure which one, which one is what, this is gonna- The bat. This one, for example, in the story, he's not a cat, he's actually a teacher, right? And you would know that if you'd read the story. The teacher. So that's what he's representing there. The frog, the school, the swan, the cube. And now, if you're not a reader in Spanish, el cubo, el cubo, el cisne, el cisne. We're always giving you the correct pronoun so that by the time you get to the pronoun game, you've heard the correct pronoun all the time. And el maestro. If you get it wrong, la rana, the frog, it's going to put it in the right place for you. La escuela, the school. El murciélago. So there you go. You could either do it again, and then you're going to get new words and new images, or you can go home. Um, let me now show you um, the scrambled. Okay, that's that one. I hadn't opened it yet, but here I think we've got a scrambled syllable game. Syllables are really, really important in Spanish. They really affect pronunciation. Um, so here, if you don't know from the story, you would know that this is... El castor, the beaver. El castor. So now, okay, these happen to be in the right order, but if you, if you move them, you get the sound of each syllable. Tor, castor, el castor. Again, with the correct pronoun, so you're always getting that feedback with the correct pronoun. Um, this one happens to drop. They're all correct in the correct order for right now, but it, they, no, they're not always the case. Cis, ne, cis, ne, el cisne. Wow, this is Ra, quite, na. This is quite La unusual rana. that they're all exactly perfect. So here they're mixed up, right? So pa, ti, to, 
El patito, the duck. Oh, okay, so. Patito. El patito. So here, again, you may not know from the, you should remember from the story, but just in case you don't, what is that? La lagartija, the lizard. Okay, let's put it in the wrong order. La let's see how it corrects you. Gar la lagartija, the lizard. And then it's going to give you the correct translation because it's going to assume you don't really know it. Here, again, you may not know it. El sapo, the oh, okay. toad. Sapo. El sapo. Okay, so we're going to go home. That's the scrambled syllables game. The scrambled letter game is similar but with letters. Um, and uh, the... Um, the El La game, I think I only have open right now in the fairy, oh, sorry, in the fairy story. So I'm going to just show you it to you in the fairy story. So. La Oruga. Trofeo, el trofeo, la rana, and now I'm going to put it in the wrong place. That's wrong, right? Etc. So anyway, this is um, camiseta, would be la camiseta. And here I'm going to put this one in the wrong place. Let's see. Oh, it's already finished. Okay. So anyway, there you go. Um, that, sorry about that. Um, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, let me just show you um, the shop. All the keys you've bought, you can go into the shop and open up um, different chests. The wood chest, let's open up a wood chest here. It's going to cost me two keys. I've got plenty of keys. I then tap it. I'm going to get one card for a card battler. This is his health. Um, and the card battler is not ready yet, uh, but it's coming soon. And you're going to be able to use this to have a battle, really cool battle against other cards that you've collected, etc. So these are awesome. And then it's going to give you one sticker. Right now, these don't look very much like stickers. These are placeholders. Um, but you are collecting these stickers. And then you're going to be able to use a magic sticker book that is coming soon. So that is what's happening there. Obviously, the more advanced the chest, uh, it's got more things in it. That's going to cost you more keys that you've earned. It's gonna, this is, this is one temporary card. This is one of the cards for the card battler, the explorer, the shield, it's got different powers, the bandit. And these are all the stickers that come, that they're gonna look differently, but these are the stickers you're collecting. They're temporary stickers for right now. Uh, this is, um, you can go to the parent portal there, or you can go to the parent portal up here. You can add your name, you can look at your explorers, you can add explorers information about your explorers and there's other things that are going to be coming over time and then here as i said if you're going to do the magical translations that first mode and you want to get rid of this spanish because you might have learners that don't need the spanish maybe they're native spanish speakers Picabel y las hadas Picabel and the fairies nuestros colores favoritos our favorite colors so here you could go in and just put Spanish only on. You can also adjust the music, the volume, reset, etc. But like now that I've put Spanish only. Hoy mis amigos se despierten. You're gonna get, they, they don't have the magical translations anymore. So that's gonna be appropriate for some, some kids. Para la um, hope that that was a good, uh, a good, uh, this is your backpack, which shows you what, you, which cards you have collected and which stickers you have collected. So here you can see what I've collected so far, and you can go to your sticker collection and see what you've got there. Um, and the sticker books and the card battlers are coming soon. So that's, um, maybe I'll give you another quick, quick peek into one of the, in the third location. Just so you can see other stories here we've got one about 
uh, raccoon and the sort of tree planting one and a picnic one just to give you a little peek into the tree planting one it's very cute story uh award-winning story actually um about what happens when you plant a tree and basically create a whole and you can see that stories are getting more advanced and you're learning much more language um, um, we're still without the magical translations and we'll put that back on and here's another story called picnic again amazing author out of spain this woman really cute story about all the items uh, that you may have a picnic. With. Así que, so, nos vamos de picnic. We're going on a picnic. La tapa, the lid. El refresco, the soda. El salchichón, the salami. Los pepinillos, the pickles. El sandwich, the sandwich. El sandwich. La galleta, the cookie. La galleta. La rebanada de salchichón, the salami slice. La cesta, the basket. El sol, the sun. Anyway, Qué rico that's it. So, está um, todo. How yummy. That is uh, kind of a, a quick tour of Fabulingua. Um, and you've got six profiles per family. Um, and you unlock increasingly more challenging stories as you unlock new locations. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.